Welcome in to the New Orleans Saints podcast, hosted by Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers who cover the team on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your hosts, Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. The Saints are getting ready to play the Carolina Panthers this Sunday. The Panthers, they're 1-11. They've already been eliminated from playoff contention. It's a really good opportunity for the Saints to get right and that three-game losing streak. You get another win in the Superdome. And somebody who has been a huge fan favorite is safety Tyron Matthew. Matthew recently received a huge honor as he was named the Saints 2023 Man of the Year. That makes him eligible for the National Football League's Walter Payton Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide. Matthew, through his Tyron Matthew Foundation, has impacted the lives of financially disadvantaged children and youth throughout Louisiana. He's done a bunch of events from his jamboree over the summer, handing out turkeys over Thanksgiving. He's recently partnered with Son of a Saint to be a mentor for them and those children. He's used a ton of his resources and even just himself to offer encouragement to the youth in the area to help them achieve their dreams. Saints owner Gail Benson said that Tyron reflects the spirit of this award in the highest way. Being a New Orleans native, he's an outstanding role model and inspiration to our city's youth. Even prior to joining the Saints, Tyron has been involved in a wide range of community initiatives in New Orleans. Since joining our team, his impact has only grown with the wide range of community initiatives he has been involved in. It is amazing to see all the wonderful work he has done and will continue to do. I definitely second those sentiments. Tyron has been an amazing person to interact with on a daily basis here in the Saints facility, and I've seen all of the work that he's done out in the community. John DeShazer and I had the opportunity to sit down with Tyron after learning of his nomination. Tyron, thank you so much for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. It's good to have you back on. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing good. Can't complain. You were just recently named the Saints nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, something that you've been named before with Kansas City. Does it hit a little bit different being here in your hometown with the Saints? I mean, I'd be lying if I said it didn't. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a big part of, you know, me coming back home was, you know, kind of that full circle moment of, um, you know, kind of, you know, going from a kid to a man, right? And so, uh, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure and a blessing, really, to uh, to kind of see my career, you know, and, and the route that it's gone, uh, to be able to come back home and, uh, you know, still do all the things that, uh, you know, I promised myself a long time ago that I'd do. You have the Tyron Matthew Foundation. You've been in the community a bunch over the past two seasons. What are some of the things that you've been able to do? Well, we do a lot of different things, um, you know, within my foundation. Um, you know, I'd probably say one of the things I'm, I'm kind of most proud of and, uh, you know, really hits close to home is, uh, you know, my partnership with, with Son of a Saint. And, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, I feel like I could relate to those kids a lot. Um, you know, a lot of those kids are, you know, really in need of, you know, mentors, role models, father figures. Um, and for me, it was kind of the same, you know, growing up, uh, you know, father was incarcerated, um, you know, was raised with my uncle and my aunt. Um, you know, a lot of ball coaches and teachers that I had, you know, just kind of that, that, that helped me out, you know, along the way. So, um, you know, that, that's been real fun to be able to work with them really closely the last couple of seasons. Is there a moment that you've had that's just been really special that you've child has said something to you that just kind of, you know, hit you hard? Yeah, I mean, well, so this this past summer, um, I actually kind of had like a jamboree day uh, mm -hmm. for the kids uh, in the park. And, um, you know, obviously you play football, you, you know, get face painters and whatnot. And one of the kids actually told me like, man, it's like the first time I've ever done, you know, something like this. And, you know, I think about the times I was a kid, um, didn't really have a lot of those opportunities to, you know, go to a park or, you know, meet somebody that, um, you know, like I idolized, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that that was a real cool moment for me. I know you've probably heard this a million times, so I'm going to be a million and one. First, very, very proud of you. But second, Thank you. Um, I roll back to your LSU days because I covered you at LSU for mm -hmm. the paper here. And when, when you were dismissed from the program, it was like, you know, I think all of us, like, were concerned, you know, what's going to happen to this guy? Yeah. 
And so what what was able to turn you around and, and make you into this man now? Well, to be honest, I, I, I really feel like I've, I've always was a good kid. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes you, you know, I think you, you need some guidance, right? And um, I think for me the turning point was, uh, you know, obviously uh, getting dismissed from school, um, but then getting arrested, you know, later that year. Um, and then from there, I remember calling Patrick Peterson, who's, who's always been, you know, instrumental, you know, in my life. And uh, he suggested to me that I go live with his dad for a few months in Florida. Mm-hmm. And um, I was kind of unsure of, you know, whether or not I was going to declare for the draft or I didn't really know what I was going to do. Um, but I think having that time to myself to kind of, you know, reflect um, and, and then get away, too, from a lot of things that I felt like, you know, were distracting me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was a pivotal moment for me. And um, to be honest, I don't think I look back, you know, ever since. Yeah, I remember being in New York with the Heisman Trophy finalists. So, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> uh, but but w- when you look at it now, you know, a man of the year nominee for two organizations, two organizations, h- how much does that speak to you about, I guess, the goods you've done? I mean, not to pat yourself on the back, but I mean, obviously, that's two organizations that have felt strongly about you. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it feels good. You know, I think any time I, you know, give back or, you know, spending time in the community, I don't think you really do it um, – you know, for like awards, you know, applause or anything like that. Um, for me, man, I remember back to my rookie season, right, and getting dismissed from school and, you know, having an opportunity to get drafted. And um, I remember going in the locker room, man, you know, it was guys like Larry Fitzgerald, Calais Campbell, Patrick Peterson, right, and just trying to be a sponge, right, and soak up as much as I can, you know, from those guys. So I, I'd probably say a lot of it was obviously you you have to do the work on your own, but um, you know, I had a lot of good teammates, man, that kind of, you know, uh, inspired me, right, to, to do a lot of great things in the community. I think I realized I could be a good football player and still do great things in the community. Now, now how much do you cherish – receiving that knowledge from them and now being a mentor to other players because a lot of these guys look up to you. I mean, I think that's the responsibility. Um, I remember, you know, my rookie year, uh, you know, eating lunch with Larry Fitzgerald, right? And um, I remember him looking at me one day telling me to just, like, do it for the next person, right? And so I think anytime you, um, you know, you're able to follow good leaders, uh, I think it's your responsibility to, to be one. Now, what would winning the award, the Walter Payton Man of the Year, what what would it mean for you? Because, I mean, you had other accolades, obviously, all pro, you know, pro bowl, those kinds of things. But what would that award mean to you? Because, you know, when you when you mention the name Walter Payton, that means something in the NFL. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it'll mean a lot to me. Um, you know, I'll probably say, you know, I think all our goals as football players um, is to win a Super Bowl, right? And uh, I have to say, you know, uh, if I'm able to, That'll probably be, you know, right up there with it. Um, you know, uh, like I said, it, it's just a commitment that that I've made to myself um, and to uh, a lot of the communities I've played in, um, you know, just trying to be more than a football player, um, you know, trying my best to, you know, inspire the next group of guys. How much has fatherhood shaped you? Because, you know, a lot of times guys, you know, obviously you change for the better with, oh, yeah. with fatherhood. Yeah, fatherhood has shaped me uh, 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 really a good deal. I probably say it's been different for me though. Uh, you know, early on I had two boys, right? And uh, it's been you know you you kind of you kind of give them that 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 tough love, right? Uh, you you like their biggest critic, um, but then man, when I had my daughter, man, it was just like. I don't know if I softened up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you but, did. Uh, <laughs> I was going to uh, say, you immediately start smiling. Yeah, like it's man. It's just this different uh, demeanor that comes over you when yeah. you talk about her. Yeah, everybody tells me that. You um, have the holiday season coming up. I know you're doing a big event with Son of the Saint. you be able to to give back to people at a time when they might not have, have been able to, to get anything around the yeah. Christmas season. It's, how special is that? I, I just it, it doesn't matter what you have going on, you know, in your life. Um Holidays is always a, a special time and a special mm-hmm. moment um, for me, especially. Um, so, uh, you know, you want other families to be able to experience that and um, and feel that joy. After the game on Sunday, I mean, you said some really amazing things about just the Saints community and the fan base here and, and how just united everybody can be. Mm-hmm. Why is it like that here? To be honest, um, I don't know. I think, um, you know, it's really been like that for as long as I could remember. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, man, 
you know, getting together every Sunday, right? Like we would pick one of my aunt's houses, one of my uncle's houses to go to, and like it was black and gold Sunday, right? Like that was the thing. And um, it didn't matter uh, what, what record the Saints had or, you know, who was going to the Pro Bowl or whatnot. Um, you know, we was always proud um, to, you know, rally around, you know, the Saints. So, uh, uh, I mean, that's the feeling I've always had, and it's the feeling I still have. How important was it for you to get back to this organization because – you know, obviously, uh, New Orleans fans, Saints fans wanted you here because you're you're a great player, but uh, but also, you know, you always hear the Saints fans say, "Man, they don't never have nobody from LSU." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's never nobody from LSU on the team. But how important was it for you to get get back here? I guess and and to kind of you know sow your seeds here because you were doing it anyway. Right. But to be here physically to do it, man, it's it's been amazing. Um, you know, uh, like you said, uh, you know, uh, I've been away for a while, but. Um, to, to come back home, right, and, uh, you know, uh, I truly feel like Louisiana loves me and, you know, I love Louisiana. And um, for them to be able to kind of see the um, the growth, you know, uh, and the maturation and just to kind of see my career unfold, um, I mean, it, it was just special. It's just special all around. When you were able to, you know, run out the tunnel in the Superdome, did it ever, you know, not have an impact on you? Or does it <laughs> start feeling normal? Nah, nah. Um, it never feels normal. Um, I mean, I'm still two years later, and I'm still kind of like, wow. Like, yeah. Like, this is me. This is my life, right? Like, I'm from New Orleans. Like, like you know, this is a big deal. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times I have to breathe, you know what I mean, and, you know, take it as it comes. But uh, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's overwhelming. Um, but it's, it's overly exciting, for sure. Does it make you you want to bring wins for this oh, yeah. even more? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, I mean, it's all about winning, right? Yeah. And, you know, I think the more you win, you know, the better people feel, right? And I think I said that, you know, in my press conference the other day, it's like, man, we're all invested in this, right, one way or another, right? Maybe, you, maybe you're a hardworking mom who, you know, spend half of your check, right, on a jersey or tickets, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, everybody's invested and uh, everybody wants to win. Yeah. I mean, it's been great having you here because I think that you do connect so well, obviously, with the fan base being Thank from you. here. And they really appreciate having you here. So congratulations on the nominee. You've gotten it two places. So yeah, now, now, one more thing. Now, when did you become like this? The, the media, darling, because you, you don't seem like <laughs> you, you don't you seem like you don't know how to lie. Now, and the right. thing is, right. you know, because even after Sunday's game, you know, the booze and everything, you were like, look, we got to give them something to cheer for. Right. And a lot of people would kind of avoid those kinds of topics, but there is no topic that you won't address. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I, I credit it too, you know, um, to a lot of the older guys I had around me, um, you know, Patrick and Larry Fitzgerald, um, you know, even when I spent that year in Houston with JJ, right? Um, yeah, like, it's not always easy, right? But I think as... Um, you know, a leader on a team, uh, you know, a fan favorite, um, you know, somebody that your coaches and teammates uh, uh, look up to and, and look forward to, um, you know, you just have to tell the truth. You have to be yourself. Um, and But, but in the end, you have to, you have to uh, show your leadership and uh, continue to, to pull people together. Do you ever get tired of it? Because every week we're like, well, we know Tyron will talk. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't get tired <laughs> of it. Uh, you know, Cam and Demario, they'll give me that wink like, <laughs> you know, go handle that. Uh, but, you know. Uh, so that's why they haven't been talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't, definitely don't mind speaking. You know, uh, if we win a game, anybody can speak. But if we lose, um, I think the message, you know, is important. You know, so uh, that guy has to, you know, uh, you know, get that message across. Yeah, that's a really impressive way to look at it. And I, I appreciate it. Obviously, it helps us in our job a lot. But congratulations. Thank you. It's always great to get to talk to you and hear from you. You always have such poignant things to say and appreciate all you're doing in the community. Thank you. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure to sit down with Tyron. And as he said, he's really trying to do everything he can to bring some wins to the city. Hopefully it starts this weekend against the Carolina Panthers. Saints practice today for the first time this week. Quarterback Derek Carr was on the field. He is dealing with that rib injury and in the concussion protocol. However, head coach Dennis Allen said today that he's handling the injuries just fine and it'll be his ability to get out of the concussion protocol that will determine whether or not he's able to play this Sunday against the Panthers. Some other injury news, defensive tackle Malcolm Roach and safety Marcus May were placed on injured reserve Wednesday, so they will be out for the next four games 
with the possibility of coming back at the end of the season for that last game against the Falcons. It's a big one this weekend. Definitely want to stay in the running for the NFC South and definitely want to start turning things around here with five more games left in the season. We'll be back with another Saints podcast on Friday. We'll have former Saints and Panthers quarterback Jake DeLome, who is on the broadcast for the Panthers these days, gives us some great insight into being a quarterback in the NFL, the pressures that you face, and what to look for in this matchup between the Saints and the Panthers. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.